So, the Whitney Houston biopic has flopped. And I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't even mad. Matter of fact, I ain't even surprised. I knew it was going to flop. First of all, when I saw the actress, I said she don't look like Whitney. She has not captured the essence of Whitney. And nobody can ever be Whitney but Whitney. Let's get into that. And then we're going to talk about why this movie shouldn't have been made. Hey, everyone. It's your girl, Miss Ann Little Paul. I'm here on this Wednesday evening. I'm about to eat some um, Tostitos with some spinach artichoke dip in a few minutes. But first, I got to talk about the Whitney Houston biopic. And no, I didn't go see it, okay? I'm waiting for it to be streamed. I wanted to, sorry, I want to go, I wanted to go to the streaming service. Now, here's the thing. It cost $45 million to make this movie that was released on, I believe it was Friday. It was released on Friday, okay? Last Friday. Now, against the $45 million budget, it only grossed $10.9 million. Of the $10.9 million, it said about $7 million was from United States and $7.5 million from the United States and Canada, okay? So that's true because our box office is because it's not just the U.S., it's also Canada, okay? Counting the world, it was about... Mm, about $2.4 million, so to speak, okay? So, here's the problem. Yes, we had a snowstorm. We had a, a, a really bad snowstorm in certain parts of the country. We also, there was like a cold, the temperatures dropped. It was extremely cold. We had like a, like a cold front. Almost 90% of the country was below its normal temperature this time of the year. Now, taking into consideration of all that, I understand it's one thing if the movie only grossed about from a $45 million budget or opening weekend. If it grossed about, I would say, in that type of situation, $27 million, then I would say, okay, that's, you know, consider that's favorable considering a situation like the weather. They said even like the whole, you know, variants and whatever played a role in that too. Now, do I think to a degree the weather did? Maybe to a degree, but I'm going to be honest with you. Most of it were bad reviews. When people were reading the reviews, I believe people decided I'm going to wait until it hits a streaming service to watch it. I don't think necessarily people don't want to watch. I, this is how I feel. I feel as though people are either the people that went to the theaters wanted to watch it. The people that didn't want to go see it aren't going to go see it. If they didn't go see if they didn't go see it this weekend, chances are they're not going to go see it at all. OK, because 10 million, that's that's like. Mm, 10 million isn't even a fourth. It's not even a quarter of the budget that it costs to make the film because it was 45 million. Okay. So if next week their numbers don't increase or it goes down, it's going to be a real dismal flop. And that's not fair to the legacy of Whitney Houston. And that's my whole issue with this film. First of all, they were trying to get the Christmas money. You got the Avatar series. If anybody's going to go to the movies, they're going to go see Avatar. Okay. Whitney's fan base is literally in their late 50s, early 60s. Some even in their, their mid 60s. Then you have the group that's like in their mid 50s and in their 50s. So that's basically... The latter part of the baby boomers going into Generation X. 
Okay? Her fans are now grandparents. Some of them even great-grandparents. Her fans aren't dipping it low like that anymore. It's not the 80s or 90s where they were like in their 20s and their 30s. They're basically at home empty nesters. So they're not going to go outside in the cold. But you see the people that produced this, and I'm, I'm talking about Miss Pat Houston. I'm going to get to her. I felt as though they made a bad call trying to release this on Christmas, getting this Christmas money. First of all, second of all, this movie should have been released in the summer. And I'm going to tell you why. Whitney Houston, a lot of Whitney Houston's, um, with the exception of her first album, a lot of her music was always released around the summer and the fall. Okay? For whatever reason. And Whitney being a Leo, it would have been perfect to release it in the summer. I feel as though you could definitely get a larger audience. It could have gotten a larger one. Had you released this film in October, I mean, sorry, in, um, I would say anywhere from late July or through August, I would say July to August, okay? You would have gotten a huge crowd of people because it's summertime. It's hot. People are going to be outside. People know that the best place to be cool in the summer is the movie theaters. So that's perfect. But y'all wasn't seeing that. Y'all, y'all didn't even see that. And I'm like, how could they miss that? Because if I'm a movie producer, I would say we are releasing this film the latter part of July or the beginning of August. And they should have released it in the summer of 2023 to commemorate the 60th birthday of Whitney Houston. That would have been perfect. That would have been, that would have made so much sense. It's her 60th birthday. What, you know, what would be Whitney Houston today? Um, 11 years after her passing. So it would have been, it would have made perfect sense. August, 2023. But Sean back released it Christmas of 2022. It don't make sense. It's Whitney Houston. The way she, I mean, first of all, it makes sense to release in the summer. The way she used to sweat and everything, she was always hot. And this was before the um, drugs and everything. She used to sweat a lot even back then. It was just even more so by that time. Okay. Thirdly, the problem with the film was the actress. Okay. I believe that when people, many people saw her, they was like, it's not Whitney. And she doesn't capture Whitney, in my opinion. First of all, Whitney did not have a wide mouth. Whitney didn't have like poked out lips. Whitney always kept her lips very tight. Whitney's features were very, believe it or not, very European. Okay. And another thing too, the actress is unknown. Okay. She's known in England, but she's not known here. And they're trying to use this story to break her big as an actress. And I resent that. First of all, I mean, I'm not gonna say first of all, my thing with that is you don't look like her. You don't capture her essence. Okay. You just don't, you don't particularly the scene when they were at Sweetwaters. Sweetwaters is a pivotal scene because Whitney has to look extremely young. She didn't look extremely young there. She looked like she was in her, and that scene, she like she was in her late twenties. And that wasn't good. She like she had been in the business as a singer for decades. So that was a huge red flag. The actress they got, they could have been better to get Yaya DaCosta again, if that was the case, because in the lifetime pick, she was convincing to a point as Whitney for a lifetime production film. The big issue many people had that saw it was that the timelines didn't make sense. It felt like everything was rushed, although the film is two hours and 30 minutes. And many people felt as though the film was trying to make Pat, because she included herself in it, Pat and Gary look favorable to the audience. And this is where I'm going to go into the Pat diatribe. If you know me and you've been rocking with my channel going back to 2018, you know that I did 
a commentary about Miss Pat Houston and what she said to her daughter about Bobby Christina. Okay. I have been critical of Pat Houston going back to 2012, late, like mid, mid to late 2012, but really late 2012. But that commentary that I posted is what blew up my channel. And I want to shout out everybody that listened to that because that means a lot to me. That has now gotten 58K views, even though they split it up in half. But the main one is 58K views. I called Pat Houston out for basically making a mockery of Whitney Houston legacy. This woman has basically done things to make money off of Whitney. Now, including this biopic, a lot of this has to do with the fact that Whitney left a debt that was worth $100 million. So they've been doing projects. She's been producing them to clear out the debt. This is not a genuine project of love. This is, we got to clear out this debt debt that Whitney left behind before we can profit okay so it seems like every project that they've done hasn't really been well received by the fans and a lot of it has to do with people they don't like Pat they don't like Pat and they don't really care for Gary but they really don't like Pat they don't like Pat they feel as though if Sissy was involved or if, you know, some other person was involved, it might be more well received. But just like in this movie, you got Whitney is going through it, supposedly. Not as bad as it could have been, but kind of bad. Talking about the um, queerness with her and Robin Franklin. Talking about the drugs, Bobby Brown. And the casting for Bobby Brown, I saw that. That was a mess. Then um, you got, like, the other stuff going on. With her, like they speed it up to where she's in the hotel. Like we didn't have, you don't have to show that scene. If that's what they really did, you don't have to show the scene. Like I said, I haven't seen it. There was no need to show that. We all know how that happened and nobody wants to relive that. And for her to do that, that was selfish. And then you propelling yourself to be great. Nobody knows you, Pat. Nobody knew you until a day before Whitney passed when you made the paper with when she got into that issue with that person who I'm not going to even name. Okay. My problem with this is a money scheme. And I get it to a point you got to clear this debt, but do it in a dignified way. Don't do it to where we just here to make money and that's it. Whitney was better than that. Whitney worked her ass off. Okay. And she never even made it to the million dollar, $100 million club. She only was worth $90 million because she never wrote her music. Only song she wrote that was released was um, Shoot. That was it. Okay? And for you, Pat Houston, to do this, along with other people, but you're the second person that's getting credit for executive producer after Clive Davis. I feel as though you are... Just m- making money, making money off of Whitney Houston's legacy and the products and the um, the material is not good. It's not worth what Whitney Houston legacy is to us. And what you said on that tape, on that message that the cousin leaked, that told everything how you would feel about Whitney. So people don't want to really spend money. They don't want to go out there with anything that you're involved in. I'm just going to say. And so in conclusion, I will say that Whitney Houston deserved better. Uh, Deserved a better biopic. But I really want to see more of a definitive documentary. Or if anything, a limited series. Because a limited series, we will get more, like a 10-part series, or I would say a nine-part series, because Whitney was a nine all across. I would say nine. A nine-part series of Whitney Houston's life and career. We didn't need this movie. If it wasn't going to be done right with the casting and everything, the script and so forth, we didn't need this film. 
So let me know your thoughts. Hey, if you saw it, did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was horrible? Um, do you think that um, Pat Houston is just, you know, trying to make money from this estate for herself and to clear off the debt that was that Whitney owed? Um, do you just think that Whitney needs to rest in paradise? Or do you think that the movie should have been released, but at a later date or just with better writing and so forth? Um, let me know. Okay. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the notification bell, comment, like, and share, and I'll talk to you soon. Later.